Hey guys, in this episode I'm going to show you how to create the cinema look in Lightroom. Hey guys, welcome to Calvin Designs. My name is Calvin and I design and that's why it's called Calvin Designs. Click right here to subscribe to my YouTube channel and get all these episodes as they come out. And click right here to subscribe to my blog and newsletter to get all the free source files to every one of these episodes. In this episode I'm going to teach you how to achieve the cinema look on both a portrait and a landscape. You can see the before here and the after here and the before here and the after here. So you can see it's that sort of like dramatic cinema look um, and how to do this in Lightroom. It's pretty simple. So let me show you. All right, so to get started, uh, you're gonna wanna go to uh, my website, kelvindesigns.com up here and go to the free lessons tab. And if you don't have a, a logon, just go ahead and create one, it's free. And once you're logged in, uh, you'll this, uh, this area changes here and you see all the episodes that show up here. So uh, the new episode that we're recording right now will show up right here, just click on it and let's pretend this is it. And you have here this button that says download source files. So just click on that and you'll get a zip file that when you uncompress, you get this folder right here, episode 23 source files. And in here you have the uh, two raw files, uh, New York and Portrait. So go ahead and import those into Lightroom. I've already uh, gone ahead and done that. So I have this collection right here and uh, we can actually just close these collections. All right, so here you go. Uh, we're gonna start off with this portrait. Now the, the thing that we wanna do is give that sort of classic cinema look, um, which is considerably different than just straight raw files. So uh, to start, um, I actually just go ahead, let's just uh, make a virtual copy so we can easily go back and forth. Um, I like doing that. So create virtual copy here. All right, and then here, I'm just gonna bring down the highlights a little bit, open up the shadows, not too much. And because this is a, uh, a portrait of a man, I can go ahead and add some clarity. If it was a woman, it's a little harsh because it accentuates a lot of the uh, uh, details in the skin and so on, which you don't really want on a woman. Okay, now the biggest thing, the biggest difference is in the vibrance. Uh, the classic cinema look, really, if you just go down, not too much, but tone it down, say, 40 points, something like that. Now, it looks a little, uh, it looks a little pale, uh, but you'll see in a, in a, in a minute here. Uh, we can bring the, uh, the uh, tint a little towards magenta and the temperature a little warmer. Not too much. Um, and then that, now that's, see how that warmed up? I can now bring the vibrance down even further. And I'm starting, so like around 50. So that's pretty good. Uh, another thing that you can do um, is go into the split toning right here. And in the highlights, you can leave it pretty neutral because we're pretty warm. But you can, you can go somewhere around here. And then in the shadows, kind of bring it in the blues. Just... Not too green, not too purple. Try to have a, a sort of a nice, uh, so there's, oh, this is all, all too strong. I'm just looking for that right tint somewhere around here, and then I just bring it down so the saturation is kind of lower, okay? And then if you feel like, all right, well, I'd rather have more of the skin tone or more of the blue, here that's what that balance does. So I like, I like bringing the balance a little to more towards the skin tones and then bring the saturation of the darkness a little higher. Not too crazy. Uh, not too much. Let's bring this down a little bit. And let's see if we bring it up a little bit. Okay, not too much. Tone that down a little bit. Okay. We can uh, we can see with the split toning before and after. You see it, it added a little bit more uh, dimension to the darks by uh, sort of col uh, cooling it off. And in the highlights, we get a little more of the uh, of that sort of skin tone. All right, so that was the first thing. Um, Next thing I'm going to do is uh, go with the radial filters, and I'm going to accentuate the um, depth of field, the uh, shallow depth of field. So we're going to go ahead and create a round, uh, a round oval here, or a oval oval. And here uh, uh, we're going to uh, leave it not inverted, so that means it's affecting everything outside. And let's just hold down the Alt key to reset everything. And here we're going to darken it just a touch, just a little bit like half a step, and uh, uh, the more important thing is lowering the clarity, lowering the sharpness, and a touch of the contrast, and bring this down a little bit, okay? So, 
I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger. I don't want. I don't. I don't really want. Uh, I don't. Want, I really want the focus to be over here, right? So if you look at before that one and then after, you see I've blurred the uh, background a little bit, and I've also kind of dirtied it up a little bit, which in contrast makes uh, the subject in focus really uh, sharp. So let's go ahead and duplicate that and move it over so we can grab them. And now I've basically doubled that effect. Okay, and I'm going to duplicate it again, but this time I'm going to invert it and reset up here. So hold on the Alt key and hold reset. And this time I'm going to increase the clarity, increase the contrast a little bit, lighten it up a touch, not too much, more in the shadows. Okay, and let's get some sharpness in there. All right, I feel like I've burnt it out a little bit too much. So I'm going to double click on here to get the exposure back to normal. And let's see what we have here. What, what's this doing? It's definitely adding some contrast there. I like that. Um, all right. Uh, in the eyes, I like to uh, kind of go in there and, and, and let's make a new. And just kind of open that up. And in here, let's just hold on the reset. And invert the mask. All right. And let's just lighten it up a touch. And in the shadows and some clarity and some sharpness. All right, and then duplicate that. Well, actually, I'm gonna delete this one because I realized one of the things in the eye, I like to be uh, slightly less saturated. So I'm just gonna desaturate it a touch, minus 15-ish, something like that. And that's pretty good, pretty, pretty good. Okay, and then I'm just gonna go ahead and duplicate that and bring it over to this side. And this side, which was a little out of focus, may need a little more clarity and a little more sharpness. And that's pretty good. Might want to just open up those highlights a touch. See, that's, that white area is kind of a little nicer. Okay. So that sort of uh, desaturated cinema look, you can see the before here and the after here. It's just a few little touches. It's not... Not too much. If his ear is a little too out of focus, we can go back in here and just kind of widen this a little bit, bring it over. Same with this, widen it a little bit. Um, that makes it sort of, uh, that's the blur, these two, because they don't have inverted masks. This one is the one that uh, focuses. Uh, you can make this a little bigger too. In an event, there you go. So on the portrait, you got the before and the after right there. All right, let's take a look at how we would do that to a urban landscape, uh, which is a little more common in, uh, or just as common, in uh, this sort of uh, cinema look. Let's go ahead and make a virtual copy to start. And all right. So the first thing I would do is, let's just close the radial filter here, is um, take tone down the vibrance considerably. All right. Bring down the highlights because look at that, they're all burnt. And open up the shadows. I want to get that... Uh, sort of high clarity feel to this photo. And um, we can add a little contrast like so. Maybe open up a little bit, just uh, like a half step, a little more contrast. Okay, that half step was a little too strong. We're gonna have to go 0 0.2, I think, something like that. All right, and then uh, go back down to split toning. And again, warm highlights like so. Let's try to exaggerate and see where we're at somewhere in there in those warm tones, okay? And then somewhere cold, not green, more in the, yeah, right, right around there. All right, now I've exaggerated considerably compared to the other one, uh, and we just wanna see what we got. Um, a little, there we go, something like that, maybe c cool down the, uh, the, the shadows a little bit. So I definitely, I've already definitely uh, created some, um, cast and color and I've, I've completely transformed it. Uh, let's go ahead and do a little more. Let's take an ND filter over here, hit the hold on the reset, and we're gonna go and just holding down the shift so it's straight. And basically this area, I want it to be a little bit darker. I want it to be a little lower contrast and a little less clarity and a little less sharp. I also kind of want the highlights to be a little lower and maybe, maybe open up the shadow just Opening up the shadows is really just lowering the contrast a little bit in this case. And more than anything, I want to desaturate that. I want to get sort of a less color. 
uh, to really focus on this uh, late show with David Letterman. All right, I'm going to go ahead and duplicate that, bring it on this side, and just flip it around like so. Okay. And you can see it kind of blurs. So it, it's really putting the focus over here. If it's too strong, uh, just kind of make it a little wider, a little, a little uh, like that. And you can also just lower the, uh, sorry, increase the sharpness. I was, I'm in negative 50 here. We can go and just make that a little less. We don't want to exaggerate it too much. And then uh, we can do a radial filter to kind of just go right here and invert the mask. We want to increase the, the clarity a little bit. Um, some sharpness, maybe open up the shadows a little bit because it's a little dark and lower the, uh, just a little bit of the highlights. Let's see what that's before, after. It's pretty nice. Kind of put some focus there. And all right, so let's take a look at, uh, another thing I actually, before we, uh, before we look at the before and after, I like to, um, add a little post crop vignetting. That's a little too strong. Something like this. In fact, on the portrait, I would do the same thing. So I'm going to go down here and just bring a little bit of post crop vignetting. It really helps sell the the subject in question here. So in this case, it's this building. So I'm a little, I feel a little green, which means that in my split toning over here, uh, bup, 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 right here, I either need to go a little warmer, a little more towards the red, but I don't want it to get too pink. So I'm going to desaturate it just a touch, something like that, and then see where we're at yeah something like that okay all right let's see what we got before and after so that increase in contrast that sort of desaturate of most colors uh focusing on um just one or two colors uh really helps sell that sort of uh cinema look all right and there you go all right, guys, I want to take a second here to talk to you about my new course called Photoshop 101. Now, I've done a lot of courses on Photoshop, and I've worked with a lot of students who have done Photoshop courses, and they often feel like they got through the course, and they still don't have a grasp on some of the basics of Photoshop. So I took the time um, and took some of my favorite projects and put it all together, and let me show you what it looks like. Here, if you go on my site, kelvindesigns.com, click on Tutorials, uh, you'll land on this page and you can check it out here by clicking Photoshop 101. And I want to show you some of these projects. The first one, uh, it teaches you all the basics of layers and some basic blending modes, selection methods. It's pretty simple. Here's the before and here's the after. And then we take another one, uh, this photo shoot uh, that my good friend Serge Romelli took. And I show you how to add smoke and a little and light the cigarette, which you can see here in black and white. And we have another one here where I teach you how to use the pen tool to basically clean up this reflection and uh, add a title. Uh, very simple. I also show you some cool tricks using lens flares and uh, photo filters. And in this photo, it goes over some of the technical details, but very basic and very simply explained. And then in this last project here, I basically take a bunch, it's a huge composite with different layers, different selections, and you can see the after here. You can see there's some glows and lighting effects and so on. All right, and then in this next project, basically I'm gonna show you how to take these different elements that have different lighting and different effects and mix them into one. We add another title as, as well. See, you add smoke in the front, make sure the light that's from behind comes in the foreground as well. And then uh, in this next project, I show you this photo and I try to create a Ansel Adam look which you can see here. So how to do uh, different multiple uh, levels. And I also show you in this how to use the clone stamp tool because there is some wires there that we get rid of. And then in this next project, I take uh, another photo by my friend Serge and I show you how to create uh, uh, tone mapping and uh, colorizing, which you can see here. So I really give you that sort of frozen, almost poster looking uh, look. And then in this photo, I take a photo of my son, and I show you a basic color correction for black and white, which you can see here. And then another one here, uh, I show you a simple sky replacement, but you can see the before and after here. It's, it, looks, uh, it looks very easy, and it actually is pretty easy, but just a few little tips and tricks, and it really shows you how to do it well. And then the last project here, uh, we do a sky replacement, but here, the trick is how to change the complete 
uh, color and temperature of the photo so that it can match the sky. And you can see the before here and the after here. So he really goes through all these basics that you really need to know. It's very simple. And I really show you how to do it through examples and projects. I'm not just going to explain a bunch of stuff. It's just follow the step, step by step, and you will learn how to use Photoshop. I guarantee it. And for a limited time, I'm offering a, a special discount to get this course. Click in the more info on the video below, and you'll get a code to use at checkout. I hope you enjoy it.